Welcome to the Entree Pastors Podcast on YouTube. This is a show that helps pastors think, act, and thrive as prosperous entrepreneurs. Well, hello there, and welcome to the Entree Pastors Podcast on YouTube. I'm John Sanders. I'm one of the co-founders of Entree Pastors, and this is episode number 195 of the Entree Pastors Podcast, and we're titling this one, Helping Others Walk in Continuous Peace. That's actually the title of a book of our guest, Dawn Marasco. Her name is, the name of her book is Continuous Peace. And in this episode, you're going to hear Dawn share her amazing testimony of how the Lord really stepped into her life and brought healing and wholeness from some severe pain and trauma in her past, and how now out of that healing, Dawn is in a place where she is serving many other women, especially helping them to get a similar uh, transformation of God's healing in their own life. And she's building a business around that core message of healing and freedom and peace that Jesus can bring. And um, she would be a great example of what we call at Entree Pastors the information-based pathway where you are building a business around a core message and you begin to develop one or multiple streams of income through that message, whether it's through speaking, writing, coaching, a membership community, things such as that. So uh, she's a great example of one of the major pathways that we encourage pastors to look at and consider, and I know you're going to be encouraged by her story. So uh, let's check out this conversation that myself and my co-host Les Hughes had recently with our friend Don Marasco. Here we go. Well, Don, it is our pleasure to welcome you to the Entree Pastors Podcast. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, John and Les. I appreciate this so much. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this conversation as uh, I got to know you briefly through a group that you and I are in together with Vincent Puglisi, who has also been a guest on our show, and Les and I talk about him on a pretty regular basis. Um, we're fans. Yep. Yeah, we're fans. He's added a lot of value to us and to many others in our community and uh, now we get to talk to you as as you and I met there. So uh, why don't we start here, Don? Just uh, tell us a little bit about your story. I want to get to the product that you're building, kind of the, the ministry that you're doing in the world today. But I know a lot of that flows out of your story. So why don't we just start there? Tell us your story. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, so I was born to a 16-year-old mom and a 20-year-old alcoholic dad. And so when you've grown up with any alcohol in your family, you know, it's tumultuous and leaves a lot of marks <laughs> and obstacles of which to overcome. Um, you know, if, if you know me as a person, I'm outgoing. I absolutely, you know, love life. I'm an encourager. But the alcoholism and the fear of getting called out by my dad caused me to kind of like fade to the background and become like more like gray where I wasn't going to jump out there and say anything because you'd be afraid, you know, you'd get yelled at or whatever. Um, but what I didn't know that when I realized I couldn't trust my dad, that actually was like a stone in my heart that started affecting the rest of my life. And mm. so, um, I, you know, went into my teenage years thinking no one's going to hurt me, you know, thinking that was a good thought, but at the same time, it would, it just paved the way for um, me to make a mess, more of a mess in my life. And um, I got to the age of 19 and I finally met a guy who loved me and I thought, you know what, I'm going to marry this guy. And so we are engaged to be married and um, he ended up being murdered right in front of me. Whoa. So by the time of 19, I had you could say a lot of baggage, <laughs> a lot of past pain and a lot of um, wounds that were undealt with. And so um, through his death, a lot of really good things did come. God actually gave me some miracles that I share and whatnot. But one of the best miracles was that I received Christ five month, five weeks later. Mm. And I, we always believed in God. We went to church, but I didn't know him as like my Lord, you know? And so that was a changing uh, point in my life. And then I started praying for a godly husband. And so thank the good Lord. He gave me that. And we've been married for well over 35 years now. So it's fun. Wow. Um, God's good. Um, one thing I will tell you is that when you have pain in your past, um, 
if it's not dealt with, it's still there. <laughs> so even though I was a Christian, even though I was going forward, that pain was not um, allowing me to truly thrive. And as pastors, you've probably seen the, the people that come into the church and they have a smile on their face. They're going to church. They, they love the Lord. They're reading their Bible, but there's just something in them that's still so, um, I would call myself broken, lost, and, um, you know, just struggling, you know, as a Christian. And so um, I did that for nine long years as a Christian, just trying to clean the outside of the cup. Like, come on, you know, get it together. You you can do this, you know, and, and trying to apply truths. But honestly, it wasn't until I surrendered all. I surrendered all of my past to God. And I said, because at that point, he said to me, um, I want you to share your full story. And, um, and I told him, absolutely no, 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 I'm not doing it, God. You know, and so at that point, um, after I saw what he was planning to do, it wasn't about me or my pain. It was about helping others. And that's when I totally surrendered. I gave him my past, my present, and my future. And at that point, honestly, I said, but God, you have to do it. And that's really where ministry picks up for me. Mm. Because at that place, I allowed the creator of the universe, who had a plan for my life, to reach into all those dark places and shine his light, to help me to heal, to um, give me answers. I cannot tell you, you know, when the Bible says, you know, cry out to God, it's like, no, I understand the cry out to God. It's a literal cry out to God. And I am telling you the answers I have found weren't just answers for me. They are answers for so many, uh, women, men too. I, 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 you know, some men join my groups, but, um, what I'm doing right now is mostly just for women, but, um, something else that happens when you have that much pain in your, you know, past is that on the healed side, I'm able to witness it in others and draw near to them and pull them in and be like, ha, let's talk. And you can get to the root of things so much faster because you identify, you know, where they, they, you know, could be. And, um, that has been a true platform of helping others heal and get away from shame and, um, past pain and, you know, all those types of things. And so I thank God, you know, it's crazy, but I thank God for the pain because mm. without him, I would never know the depths of his love. And without it, I would never know fully who he is. You know, well, first of all, thank you for sharing your story. One part, and I don't want to um, dismiss what you're saying at all because, or minimize it. That's the word. I don't want to minimize it. When I say this, all of us have pain. All of us have areas in our life of brokenness and woundedness and trauma in the past, you know, potentially there's, there's stuff there. What I want to ask you about for those others that are listening, who are struggling with private pain, pain that they've never really shared with anybody, take us a little bit into that part of your story. And I want to connect it to that moment of surrender. You know, I understand what it is inside of human nature, at least in my own nature to suppress that. I don't want anyone to see those parts of me. I don't want to share that. I get what keeps us struggling in silence, but what was it for you? What was kind of that breakthrough moment where you realized not only do I need to like let God into this area of my life, I need to share it with others. And, and then, and by doing that surrender. So tell a little, go a little deeper into that part of your story. Sure. So growing up, um, you know, my mom never showed us like how to heal or like anything like that. You know, every once in a while she would tell me to pray, which was a great gift. But, um, so all I did was open, learned myself, open up your heart and shove pain into sections of your heart and then like close it over with a huge rock. Like that's basically how I describe all those years, including when my fiance died, because I didn't know how to heal. I got saved. I knew the Lord. I knew I was, you know, forgiven, and set free, but I didn't know how to walk it. I didn't know how to live it. So again, all these good, even the good things were in there and kind of held back with the same rock because for me to be able to fully receive, I had to fully go in and allow God access. So um, I, how the turning point for me was um, I was at my kitchen table um, for um, three days in a row. And the first day I felt the presence of God come into my room and I felt him put onto my heart. I want you to share your full story. And I said, no, no, absolutely no. 
And he said, this is what he said. You did the sinning. I, I did the saving. This is why I put on my heart. You did the sinning, Dawn. I did the saving. And I thought, no, I can't do it, God. I can't. I can't let you pray. And at that point, I felt, you know, that sensation left. And I've continued reading my Bible, forgetting. The next day, it happens again. And on the third day, I said, God, I'll do anything. You know I love you. I'll do anything. I'm not doing that. I'm not going in there. I can't go in that mess. You can't go in that mess. No. And so it's like you're, what you're saying, it's that hidden place. And we think it doesn't affect us, but it does. You yeah. know, it affected me with fears. My friends were like, oh, yeah, Dawn, I saw how fearful you were. You know, um, mistrust, even mistrusting God, all those things. Why? Because I had a hidden place that I wasn't really letting them into. Um, and then I went to a um, that Friday night. I felt I went to a um, retreat and the speaker was giving one testimony after another. And I do have a lot of really, really awesome testimonies from God. And I thank him for them. Um, but they were, uh, some of the best ones were hidden because they were hidden in with the mess, you know? And so um, I saw all the ladies on the edge of their seats and I was like, Lord, look at them. They're all on the edge of their seats. And I just gently heard him speak to my heart. And I could do that with you if mm. you would only let me. Mm. And I think that's the, the letting was like, I'm holding back God's will. And then I realized it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with these ladies that are hungry to see God set you free. He'll set me free. And that's what he said also to me. They will know what I've done for you. They will have hope for what I've done for you. I will do for them. And I think that's what testimonies are, right? That's what a life transformed is. Okay. If I was that much of a mess and God set me free, why would he not do that with you? Right. And so, yeah, my guess is, and you can speak to this. My guess is, man, okay. Someone's had years worth of pain and trauma. That's been kind of stuffed away and unprocessed and undealt with. Certainly God's telling you, share your story. So I, what I was going to say is there's healing in the, in sharing the story. I'm sure that that has been part of a healing process. I'm also guessing that you probably sought help from whether it's a, you know, counselor or therapist, whatever, there were probably some people that God put in your life that you had to submit to that process and humble yourself and go and get, you know, professional help or spiritual help or whatever that may look like. Is that a fair summary? Because both are, there's healing in both, but it's not just, you didn't just go to the stage to the neglect yes. of the other. Is that a fair statement? Yes. It would have been a train wreck if I went straight to the stage, but there I did go. go the day that I surrendered, he put on my heart two things. One, you're going to share this with a friend and he put on who and I did afterwards I met with her that day I said we're going to meet at your house one day and then um I also and he also showed I'm going to speak at the next retreat but it wasn't that first year it was two years later so sure. I had two years of healing under my belt you know what I mean and then that and then I started doing more types of speaking but I'm going to tell you my best healer yes I went to count um counselors coaches or uh uh therapist therapists, counselors, I guess. I don't know. Um, and, um, but my best was my, my intentional time with God pressing in to who he is pressing in, not letting, you know, here I am again, God, you know, just here I am again, God, here's another fear. God, help me God with this. God, why am I still stuck over here? You know? And so all of that became, which I didn't know tools and my tool belt. This is just to help other people. Like Preston, he really does care about what we say. He really does meet us in those broken places, you know, and get the counseling, you know, and I have a good friend of mine I recommend people to when, um, you know, when, when it's beyond, when someone needs someone face to face, you know, and, um, and I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is a lot of times is, an, is enough to help at least get things started. And if you get really stuck, you could go see somebody or, um, you know, yeah. Maybe this is a good place just to pause and say this, you know, generally on this podcast week in and week out, our content is celebrating. We, we focus maybe a little bit more on the business side of things than that, certainly than the church side of things, although we'll have church conversations as well. But rarely do we talk about, you know, emotional uh, issues or some of those traumatic things in our past. But I'm just going to pause long enough to say maybe one takeaway from this episode, there's someone listening to this. And God's nudging you in a similar way that he did Dawn years ago saying, it's time to bring it into the light. 
and again, the invitation isn't go jump up on a stage and start unpacking everything, <laughs> at, at least not initially, but go, go share it with someone. Take those things that the enemy is keeping locked away in shame and in darkness and bring it into the, the light of God's light and truth and love and just bring it out to, to some trusted people because there's po powerful things happen when we tell our stories. Powerful things happen. We don't always have to build a ministry or a business around it. But I know it's cliche, Don. I was going to make the statement. You can respond to it. We hear sometimes in church speak or Christianese, you know that um, that your ministry is or your your message is from your mess. Your your ministry is found in the mess that you had. And I just think, even though it's cliche, there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, you're experiencing that, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what God was trying to say to me. Like my biggest thing for you is to use that mess to have a message of hope for my women that will help set them free and um, also help to um, take them into a deeper walk with him. I think if anything, that's my, my main thing is that, okay. you know, we all have. So let's do this then. Clearly anyone listening to this that that kind of has a heart for the church and for ministry, we hear your story and we go, ah, oh, obviously there's ministry there. And then this is where a lot of pastors or people with that ministry mindset get stuck is we go, well, then if it's for the Lord and if it's for ministry, then it obviously has to just, how could I dare charge anybody to get healing in their life from significant pain? I mean, I can understand charging someone to fix their car or their, you know, their plumbing issue, but how could I put a monetary value on helping someone overcome childhood, you know, abuse or neglect or whatever the case may be. But yet you are, there is a business component to this. So I want to kind of shift gears in your story a little bit and talk about, so what are you building? What as as you've been on this journey now for a while of sharing your story and it looks like different things in different settings, but as you're kind of packaging and putting a product around sharing your story, Tell us about what you're building, and then maybe we'll get into some of the mindset piece behind that. And real quick, on what I'm building is not for just the broken. It's mostly for those that want a deeper walk with God. And then they realize, oh, this is what's holding me back. You know, these are the lies I'm believing. You know, then they can dig in a little bit. But it's all about I want a deeper walk with God, and I think that's 90% of the Christian walk. In the Christian but I think, universe. yeah, I think you're right, Don. that that first domino needs to fall. Yeah. You know, as long as it's standing there kind of creating a um, firewall, you know, for everything else. It's got to go first. So yeah. I, I, I appreciate you sharing your story because it sounds like that was a catalyst for all the rest of it. It was. And honestly, I would have nothing to share if, if, if I didn't allow God to do that inner work. And so I'm so thankful. Um, but I will tell you, um, you know, I love pastors. I love, I think that you guys are the heartbeat of all that God's doing. And I am so thankful. So when God was telling me to share with pastors, um, I ran past another pastor friend of mine and, and he's like, yeah, they do want help. They do see women who, who they're beyond their reach and they do want them to um, have a place that they can go. And, you know, it's easy. It's online. It's a small amount, but we're growing and, and um, you know, deepening our walk with him. And so, um, and there is a charge to it. You know, I have it at a low charge. My charge is only I, whatever the year is. So right now we're in 24. So it's, um, uh, 2024 for peace, you know, um, peace in 2024. And so, um, I wrote a book, so I was such a train wreck, um, but I did write a book called continuous peace, four steps to living the life of peace God intended. And so this book will walk you through four steps. It's 12 chapters, but four steps that truly helped me learn how to live my life, which was, um, one of peace and not fear one of, you know, not anxiety, but trusting God. And so that is a, a 101, um, yet it will take you deeper. No matter where you're at in your Christian walk, it will help to take you deeper in your walk with God. Um, but like pastors, my story kind of started with, you know, God putting a message on my heart and going and sharing it. And it wasn't about my past. It was more about what, who he is or what, you know, um, you know, one was design your harvest. You know, we all feel stuck at different times or in different places in our in our life. Well, I did a whole workshop on it and, um, God put on my heart to start each one, each lesson. There's three lessons, each one with a truth that God wanted these women to hear. Well, those three truths I pulled out and I'm like, well, this is so valuable. And you know, as pastors, you teach these messages, they're like, so God given and so valuable. It's like, 
to have it go on a shelf is almost like sad, you know? And so that's when I started asking God, what do you want me to do with these messages? And um, that message, those first three truths became my first module in my uh, mentorship. And a mentorship is basically a membership that um, where I mentor women and I gave away and I had it on here. It was like, I think one video may have been like three minutes, five minutes, nine minutes, something like that. And you sound, it seems like, what, that's all you gave them? Yeah, I did because we, we had that one video and then we had a handout for them to apply those truths. It's so much different than just hearing. And this is the mentoring that we start to apply. And then we can take away the lies. Well, I don't believe that truth because this is the lie that's really I'm struggling with. And so as simple as that sounds, that was a month of material. And at the end of the month, I had slides and we got together for a two hour coaching call and women were set free as we all just started talking about these three truths. And so that is a mentorship. That is a membership. And I feel like so many pastors, and that was the second reason I'm so excited to be on here. One, I would love to help your women, but at the same time, I would love to help you. You know, I have a son who's going to school to be a pastor. And um, I, I told him from the beginning, I'm like, just find another, I hate to call it a side hustle, but some other way that you can make money so that at any point a church can't just it sounds horrible, but it happens. Get rid of you. And you just, you know, you're out today and you have a family and what do you do? And at least if you have a steady income and that's what membership is, you're getting for me, it's small amounts, $24 per, but it's coming in every single month until they drop out, which, you know, for me, keeping it lower, you know, and keeping in contact with them and connection and, and letting them get growth. Um, in all honesty, you know, that's a continuation month after month and I can grow that. And yeah. so that's what I'm kind of talking to my son about, like, you know, where and, and to pastors, where are you strong? Where do you keep hearing people say like, oh, my gosh, that message or man, I would love to talk to you more about that. Maybe you are a mentor. Maybe you are just supposed to take that message further and create a, a, an, a um, you know, a platform where you can continue to share and continue to reach people even beyond your walls. Yeah. One thing I just want to highlight, Don, you you probably don't use this terminology, but in our entree pastors space, we call what you're doing or the type of business that you're starting to build, we call it the information-based pathway, where you're simply building a business around a core message or an idea. And a mem you know, that can look like a lot of things. It can look like speaking and writing and coaching, but but right in there is a membership community. And that, again, that's where you and I connected inside of Vincent Puglisi's membership about membership communities. But it's such a cool business model because, yes, you are impacting people with a message and you're also creating recurring revenue around that community. Um, and so, again, it's maybe not the silver bullet for every person, but pastors, as we've said for a long time to our community, pastors are content creators, they they don't always think of themselves in that regard, but they are. They create content regularly through writing and speaking and kind of, I'm just going off what you said a minute ago, instead of just putting that up on the shelf, find that thing that you really, you know, you love to talk about, you love to serve people in and around that and start building community around that. Provide value, charge a fee for it and watch not only community grow, but income grow as you're doing that. I want to get into the mindset piece for just a few minutes. You maybe didn't struggle with this as much as pastors do or sometimes can. And if you did, feel free to share. But was there any pause around that? Or do you ever struggle with the mindset of like, man, how can I charge people for this and actually sell this when when really it's ministry and I'm helping people? Well, I did ministry. It's such a good question, John, because I did ministry for 20 years, meaning I you know, met with girls, I taught small groups, I always was pouring out. And to switch was when I wrote my book, it was like, Oh, okay, we're going to be charging for a book now, you know, and so that was a good kind of um, transition. But at the same time, I think, like you and others that I kind of surround myself with, and also God is like, what I'm, I'm trusting to you. I'm expecting you to give away. And in all on it, like meaning, serve others with it. And so, in all honesty, like I would never expect my pastor to stand up there and, and preach for free. That would be ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's against the Bible, you know? And so, you know, we, a workman is worth their wage. And so what's the wage, whatever people are willing to pay, 
right? And so I do not find that people are like, oh, you're charging for this? Because right now in my church, you can get free small groups or you can join my online small group at a cost at $24 a month. I don't have anyone so far being like, oh my gosh, you charge for this small group? No, they know they're getting mentoring. They know they're getting something more and no one has been upset with that. They all join and are like, yes, good. And they feel a part of a community. And so to me, for me to pull back, I feel would be a disservice. One, because I'd have to get a job. <laughs> and two, um, and that would not serve God well because I would not have the creativity to do what he's called me to do. And actually, John, that's funny because last fall, I was in between. Uh, it was a pivotal moment for me. Um, I was creating courses from my book. I, I, I taught a small group and I created it as a course and I did a, it was an intensive one month, four, four weeks with four coaching calls. It was incredible. But you know how exhausted it is, exhausting it is to have knock on so many doors, call so many people, tell so many people to fill a course again, to do it again, to do that again. I thought, I can't do this. That This is not a good way of spending my time. So that's when I said, either I'm going to get a job or, and God's like, or you're going to start your um, membership. Hmm. And I'm like, and he's like, it's the long game, but this is where I want you. And so yeah. then I just start putting all these things into that. And that one month course turned into four months, four focused months, you know, on step one through four this year in 2024. And so um, what's also nice is that having um, a mentorship, everything I've ever taught in there is in there as a tool for them to go watch and, and glean from at any time. So when like um, I had one lady, she joined us and she was going through some rough things and she went back to that um, design your harvest and she looked at our marriage and she's like, it's not where I want it to be. And so she went through the three lessons. She said to me, I cannot tell you how much good I got out of this. I cannot tell you. She changed some things instead of like poking at her husband, what he should be doing. She stopped hands off, trusted God. And that man, she sent me a text. He turned around and he started leading her. Yeah. I mean, she's like, you can't make this up. I'm like, no, when we stop trying to do it our way and we allow God, we pray, we release and we allow God to work his way. She just loved her husband and he naturally loved her back in a, in a good way. So it's just That's awesome. Great. That's great. What's your vision for your membership? Like if three years from now, everything's just firing on all cylinders, what's, what does that look like? What would you love to see that grow into? You mean, as far as. Um, well, like well, numbers and, and, and you can say numbers if you know, them. like what, you know, how many, how many members would you love to have? What kind of income would you love to see being generated from that? Because those numbers represent people that you're serving as well. Well, and that's the thing I have always prayed. It's funny because when I was a fearful wreck, I was praying for the one who would one day hear this message of how to let, how to let go of fear and grab hold of, uh, peace, God's peace, right? So I've been praying for these people for 20 some years. And so for me, again, I'm praying again, God, bring them in. And so that's why I'm love. I love this podcast. I love the things that we can do and say, Hey, I want to help you have a deep walk with God, whatever that looks like. Um, I, my goal is a hundred. I don't know when that will be. I'm thinking, I was kind of thinking by the end of the year, but it may be this time next year. The one thing I have the best advice from, and I think Vince teaches this too, um, it's a three year, it's a three year game. Yeah. I'm, I'm month 14, you know, it's like, I am thrilled with where we are right now. Um, I'm starting into some right now. We're going to be teaching about the seven obstacles, each one, each month that, um, rob our peace. And so I'm so looking for, and we're going to overwrite that with the truth that, that, you know, um, uh, I'm going to give you one just because I can, I think. Um, so one of the obstacles is I feel like I'm not able. And I think a lot of pastors, I'm not able to have a, <laughs> I'm not able to have a, a, a platform where I share the same messages I've been sharing. Yes, that's exactly. We don't have to recreate the wheel. We can use the very things God has used in the past, bring it in as our um, goal, God's goal that he's, you know what I mean? Like the things that he's already placed his hand on already anointed, they're probably already videoed or you can redo them. Um, so when I feel like I'm not able um, then the truth is I have been enabled by almighty God. So enabled over not able equals peace. That's and good. so we just walk through all that and it's good. 
I love and it. That will be a whole month. That will be one topic in a month, you know, and then the next obstacle. That's great. Well, listen, this has been fantastic getting to hear a little bit of your story. And again, I'm holding you up as an example of someone that is doing the what we call the information-based pathway. And you're doing it. It's possible. You're serving people. You're helping them get transformation. And there's a path that you're on that's going to create you know, revenue for you. And I think it's a win-win all the way around. And it's what we encourage with our community. So Feel free to tell us if someone wanted to connect with you and kind of go deeper into your space. If we've got pastors listening to this, go, man, there's ladies in my church who need this, uh, whatever that may look like. How do people connect with you and where would you send them? So my website is donmarasco.com, D-A-W-N, Marasco, M-A-R-A-S-C-O.com. And if you throw in a slash and you put guide, I'll be able to, you'll be able to, um, give a link for a free month. So anyone that you want to just try it out, you know, I'm going to give that to your listeners. They can try out my membership for an entire month, which is nice to see. They can go into all the different things. If they don't like it, it's fine. You know, have a free month on me. I'm happy. Um, but at the same time, um, I love to get on one-on-one -on -one calls with them, but my husband and I, he is my sidekick in this, you know, so he does all the background stuff and I do the, you know, all this, the forward and the, the messages and all that. But um, he put together a guide and I added to it, but uh, things that helped us, such as email we use, um, website hosting, um, how to convert videos from big videos to smaller videos, um, just things that we have found that in our platform really help us to um, go forward. And, and it's cost effective. You know, we're, we try to do things, um, you know, at a good price. And then also for who I run my platform through. Um, I was speaking to them and what I love about them is, and this is how I start with them is that you can get in for free and you can, you can create as many um, courses as you want and you can have five students. So the only holdback from paid and free is five students. Well, once you have five students, you're more than paying for the subscription there. And then if you use my link, you get 25% off your whole first year. So it's a really huge savings and well, not huge savings because it's not that expensive, but it's an awesome, um, I think that it's 25% off of, um, I, I don't know how it goes, but anyhow, it is a good, it is a good savings and just use that. You don't have to get in for a year and then. That sounds good. So the guide is basically for someone who might be interested in a platform of their own. It's just some of your best tools and tips and practices that you've got as you've been building out your courses and your uh, membership community. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Right. And there'll be a link on there to connect. Um, so you can give them to other people, women to join us. And honestly, my husband and I are very, very open. If you wanted to have a, a call, you know, we would love to meet you. Cause I think a big thing that pastors are like, well, and all of us really, well, what would I talk about? Like, I see that's a good need and I see that it doesn't take a lot of time, you know? Um, but how, how do I, what do I talk about? And so often it's just having another conversation with someone else, picking your brain, going, okay, but where have you heard people say you're, where have you heard people say you're good at? Yeah. You know, so it's good. But yeah, so we would jump on either call and also for women too, if they wanted to, before they'd even join for free. Talk. Fantastic. Well, this has been fun getting to hang out with you in, in uh, this context, Don. Thank you so much for coming on the show and adding value to our community. We're grateful for you. I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. Hey, and Don, you might have said this earlier. You mentioned the three year goal and all that. How, how far in are you? Like how deep are you? And when did you start? Yep. So February of last year. So does that make me 14 months? I think I have okay. done. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and the first, I started with Good eight job. people. I started with eight people and you know who those eight people were? Those that were in my course already people, friends. They're like, yeah, yeah I'll support mm -hmm. you. And that's what those five are. If you could just get those five of like supporting yeah. you, but yet being truth tellers, yeah. was it helpful? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Good, good job. That's good. And keep it up because the whole three year mark is true. Les and I with Entree Pastors, our platform, we're a little over two years in and we're seeing that, you know, the first year is a struggle. The second year, the momentum, you really feel it Learning. starting to build. And and I'm excited about year three, but the sad reality is most people quit. They go into this wanting to, you know, get rich quick mm -hmm. and get instant success because, you know, the internet told them they could and they don't have the long vision for it and they, they don't have the grit to stick with it. 
and they quit way before the finish line. The payoff's there. They just quit before they get there. So yeah. keep up the good work. We're proud of you. Keep Thank going. You. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. And you know what? The the goal line is another person helped. Another person growing. You know what I mean? So to me, mm-hmm. it's like we are hitting goals and and it, it is good. It's a it, it is a true blessing. And and to those who feel like you can't make money doing this, I believe with all my heart, this was God's will for me and my husband to help us in our latter years, years. with all of my heart. I always knew God would provide financially because we used a lot of our 401k to start things. So we're like, okay, God, we're in your hands. You know, it's kind of that trust. Yeah. So he's there good. You go. Well, all the best to you, Don. Keep up the great work and we'll stay in touch. All right. Thank you so much. I'll be praying for you guys and your ministries. Thank you. God bless. Well, hey, thanks for watching this episode of the Entree Pastors podcast. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be notified every time we release a new episode. If you'd like to get connected to other pastors who are learning to think, act, and thrive as prosperous entrepreneurs, then we invite you to check us out on Facebook. Just search for the Entree Pastors Connect group, answer a few of our simple questions there, and we'd love to include you in the conversations. And if you're really ready to go to the next level, then we invite you to join our Entree Pastors membership community. When you become a monthly subscriber, you will receive access to courses, exclusive community, and coaching that will help you along in your own Entree Pastors journey. If there's anything else we can do to serve you, please visit us at entrepastors.com and we will do our best to serve you there. God bless everybody. See you soon.